All right, we have one more hot topic presenter for you, and his name is Shay Emery. And it's my pleasure to introduce Shay to you. He's an award-winning all-star middle linebacker. Go on. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but uh, he's also a two-time Grey Cup champion and an eight-year Canadian Football League veteran. Shay founded Well Men. Uh, a, men, a men's adventure club which aims to ignite an adventurous brotherhood aimed at awakening and evolving a new generation of men. I had the opportunity to attend a well men retreat a few months ago and had just the most amazing time connecting with other sort of dudes around wellness and just in a casual, authentic environment outdoors up in Squamish. It was pretty incredible, very powerful. Uh, Shay is also a dad, a husband, also a lumberjack. Uh, at that Wellman retreat, we were doing archery and axe throwing and all kinds of things. And he's an advocate for men's health across Canada through various campaigns such as Bell Let's Talk. Some of you might have heard of that. Uh, Movember and the Canadian uh, Men's Health Foundation. So it is absolutely my honor and privilege and pleasure to introduce Shay Emery to the stage, everybody. Give a warm welcome to Sorry. Shay again, guys. Woo! Woo! How you guys doing? You can hear me? Hear me in the back, up top there to the left? Right? Good? Guy in the turquoise jacket up there, you see? Can you see me? I got great vision, so I don't know about you, but you're young. I'm not that young. Wow. Um, thank you guys for having me here today. Pretty stoked. Pretty stoked to be here. Um, share my story. Uh, which is essentially um, what I did, how to get me to this space right here. So, what's on that? What's up there? That's me. My bald head. It's great. I told you I'm not that young. Um, so I played eight years in the pro professional football in the Canadian Football League. Thank you. Great. Um, I was voted the nastiest player in the CFL two times, which is essentially the player that other guys don't want to play against, which is a pretty, pretty big compliment for me. Um, but the reason why I was so nasty is because I had a lot of anger, a lot of frustration that I let out on the football field. And it, whilst it worked when I was on the football field, it didn't really work when I was off the football field. And a little bit about my story is, as a kid, I was abused, I was bullied, made me scared of the world, made, me, made it difficult for me to navigate through pretty much every social interaction. Any room I walked into, I recognized who was the alpha male and who could potentially hurt me, betray me, and that was quite stressful. When you have your fight or flight signals going off 24-7, 365, I'm sure some of you probably know what I'm talking about. And it made me difficult to buy into who I was as a man, because as a man, you're taught that there's this framework that you need to fit into. And my experience as a victim didn't fit into that framework. So I spent my life hiding that part of me, that experience, until I became the baddest dude on the football field and felt that I was comfortable talking about it. And that's why I'm here today. Say thank you, thank you, that's wonderful. Um, I'm very passionate about this. It's very close to my heart. My family suffers from mental health issues. I obviously have dealt with depression my entire life, trying to battle through these thought processes, negative spiral of depression that comes back every once in a while. And the reason why I'm so passionate about it is because I need to, I feel like I need to do my part. I have a platform and I want to share my story. I'm, you know, an alpha male, but I also had this experience of being a victim which isn't a masculine trait, so to speak. So I decided to stand tall in my truth, be real about my story, and tell it to as many people as I can. And this is the most people that I've ever talked to in my entire life. How many people are here tonight, Brent? 2,000? 2,000 people. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. That's awesome. That's pretty cool that you guys showed up. I wish I had this when I was a kid because... I was lost, I was scared, as I mentioned. I didn't know how to express my emotions other than hitting people for a living, and that's what I did for eight years. It was a lot of fun, but it's, it's very 
uh, scary to be in a dark, silent place inside your apartment thinking about the things that you think about when you're, you know, suicidal, which is difficult to think about. And so I started to dive as deeply as possible into self-development, figuring out who I was. I started doing yoga. I started meditating. But the thing that helped me the most was going out into the woods. Yes, I'm wearing a lumberjack shirt right now for a reason. It's all about, you know, what you look like, right? Um, so I found clarity in that. I found clarity in just the therapeutic nature of finding things that I could express myself through. So that meant starting with yoga, meditating. Then it went into cooking. Then it went into logger sports and, and mountain biking and just finding things in my life that I could find clarity and peace of mind. And that can happen in, in any part of the spectrum, masculine or feminine. It doesn't make a difference if you enjoy being creative and, and creating beautiful works of art on a, on a plate or on a blank canvas, or you're just a physical person like myself who enjoys being on a mountain bike or throwing axes, which I did this morning in Whistler, which was great. Um, so I guess that's my, my ploy is really to try and find that in yourself is to really in, engage you guys in an experience where you find your voice. Engage yourself in an experience where you can stand tall in your truth. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, six, I'm barely six feet tall, and now I feel like I can finally step into who I am. And it took me 26 years to do that. You know, I had this, this framework of who I was, and I really bought into it. I brought into this, this masculine being. And it was, uh, it was pretty difficult when that persona, that identity was taken away. When you're not, not a football player anymore, who am I? I don't know. I had no clue. So, I, like I said, I headed, headed into the woods and I embraced that imperfection. I embraced the fact that I don't know who I am. And I went and tried to find out who that was by doing all this work and finding that passion. And now I have a passion. I have many of them. I was, I was just telling Ashley over there, this, my, my week was stand-up paddle boarding yesterday. I was throwing axes in Whistler today. Tomorrow I'm going snowboarding. On Saturday, I'm doing uh, some logger sports. And on Sunday, I'm going to uh, a dude ranch with my wife for, for Valentine's Day. Like, that's my life. That's what I cultivated for myself. So what I'm asking you, to, you guys to do is find what you're passionate about. Find your voice. And so what I did is when I went into the woods, we went to the Cypress Falls Park, which is essentially like this big waterfall about 15 minutes away from downtown Vancouver. And I got lost in the roaring nature of the, the waterfall. And um, what happened was is everything went silent and I felt this like urge to just yell. I felt this urge to just let something off my chest. And I heard the little voice of that boy that was silenced in my head. And this is what he said. Woo! <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. So, what I want to do, I know you guys have been shaking hands and hugging and talking and, and having a great time, but what I want you to do is, if you can, please stand up. Even the guy in the back there with the turquoise jacket on. I see you, buddy. I, I'm, I'm watching. You're not standing up yet. Come on, bud. I see you. Get your hands out of your pockets. Don't cross them around your chest. Maybe do a little stretch, a little... Ugh, right? So what I want you to do is I'm going to count you in. It's going to go, this isn't for real. It's going to go three, two, one. And then after one, I'm going to say go. And that's when you guys let it loose. Okay? You guys ready? You guys ready? Camera guys, you got this? Where's the camera guys? You guys got video of this? Make sure you get video of this. Okay, here we go. Three, two, stop, 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 stop. It sucks being repressed, doesn't it? When you're trying to say something, you're like, ah, I want to say, ah. And then you get stopped. That's what my whole life was like. I felt like I, I couldn't say what I wanted to say. And so I said my voice. I screamed, woo, right? I did whatever I did back there. I want you to find your voice. Maybe it's a grunt. Maybe it's a squeal. Maybe you're going to voice the, maybe a, I love you, Diane, or whoever your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend is. Maybe that's what you're going to do. 
What I want you to do is find your voice. Stand tall in your truth. Find your passion. I promise you I'm not going to repress you. I'm not going to stop you. This one's for real. Okay? Do you, does everyone have that little voice in your head that you want to scream? Yes? Okay. Am I, am I past my time already? Probably. Yeah, whatever. It's my show, Brent. You guys ready? Okay. Deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. One more. One, two, three. That was good. Thanks, guys. That was amazing. Thank you Is it so good? Much. That was perfect. Was amazing. Perfect. How was that? Is that rocking or what? Woo! We actually did that uh, exercise on this, on this day of retreat up in Squamish, and they called it Yell Man. And it was really hard to not hold back part of your voice, right? Do you guys, you guys feel a bit of that? Just holding back a little bit? It, but you guys did pretty well. That was probably the loudest you've been all day, which is incredible. So well done. Let's give another round of applause for Shay Emery, everybody. <laughs> Woo! So we really want, this is the end of the Hot Topic session, which is very sad. And we really just want to give one more round of applause for all of our Hot Topic speakers. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me, those stories you just heard represents the potential in this room, in the audience, with all you guys. You agree with that? Yeah. Because a lot of those speakers, a lot of the speakers that have been here today were just in your seats. And just people that got inspired somehow by someone at some time to have a voice, to have their voice heard. And, and then they're on their stage. So that to me is just super inspiring. So. And everybody was able to really share their talents and also their very individual stories. I mean, I think as uh, we've talked about, mental health affects us all in very different ways. And so when people were sharing, or at least this is what I noticed, when people were sharing their stories, everybody's story was so different. And because everybody's story was so unique, that also took them on a unique path to start a club, start a group, become a spoken word poet, really uncover those talents. I think that there's so many things that can be taken from today, and those Hot Topic speakers are really a good example of how unique your message can be. So for those Hot Topic speakers, for all the speakers up until down today, if they inspired you so far, let's give it another big round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Amazing, amazing.